What's going on everybody? This is Peter from CodeBoost and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and CSS is the number one way to style your web pages. If you're new to web development, CSS is definitely the place to start if you're trying to make your websites look good. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, go ahead and get your code editor opened up as well as a web browser to view the page in. We're gonna go ahead and get started with a basic HTML file so that we can view our CSS code and our styles. So go ahead and copy this HTML file. This is just the basic boilerplate. And the first thing we're gonna do is in the head of our document, we're gonna add a style element. The style element is the place where we can put our CSS code inside of an HTML file. It's just a convention to have this uh, element go inside the head. You can put it in the body as well, but it's nice to keep it separated from our elements. And we can go ahead and get started by creating a div element inside of our body. And we'll just put some text in, text in the element. Now, if we go ahead and save and drop this HTML file into our browser, we'll see the text is visible here. And obviously we haven't made any styles yet, so nothing there. And to get started, we can use what's called a CSS selector. And what that is, is it is, we have a selector here followed by a set of curly brackets where we're gonna include our rules. And this selector here just says, grab all of the divs in your uh, HTML file and apply some styles to it. So we can go ahead and get started. Maybe we'll say, we want the color to be gold. And this is gonna be the text color can also say something like background color is dark green. And you'll notice that each of these rules are a property followed by a colon, then a value of the property, a uh, value for the property and a semicolon. And so that's just something to get used to in CSS. That is the standard format that we're going to write most of our rules. So if we go ahead and give this a save and refresh, we'll see the text color or color was applied, it's gold, and the background color was applied as dark green. There's some other properties we can apply to any elements. We can change the font size. So maybe we'll bump this up to 40 pixels. We can change the font weight. And this is either gonna be normal or bold. So let's just go ahead and say bold for this one. You can also change the font family. And this is how you can apply a specific font. I've got a drop down of options here. You can um, choose whichever font you want. Most fonts, uh, a lot of fonts will be available, but most fonts you'll actually have to download separately. I think everything in the dropdown should be available. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this one and we'll see here that there are actually multiple fonts in this row. And we'll add a semicolon to the end. That's because it's gonna try to load this first font. And if not, it's gonna load this one and so on, go down the line. So if we go ahead and save and refresh, we'll see the rest of our styles have also been added. There's some other properties we can do. We can say text align center. We can also add a property called margin. So if you add margin is 20 pixels, if we go ahead and give it a save and a refresh, we'll see our, our text is centered, but also we have some spacing around our element now. This is actually gonna give us 20 pixels around all of the sides of the element. If we want a different value on the top and bottom, as well as the left and right, we can add two values here. So if we give it two values, and you'll notice this is separated by a space. If we do that, we'll have 20 pixels on the top and bottom and 10 pixels on the left and right. The first value is just gonna be the top and bottom, second value, the left and right. We can even alternatively say something like uh, 100 pixels, 50 pixels. We can give it four values here. And in this case, and we can even inspect the element here just to see, we'll notice that we have different values for the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. That's this, our margin is this space in pink. And so that's how we can apply margin to either different values or just give it a single value. We can do something similar for padding. We can say 20 pixels and it will do something similar, we'll get um, it's this green box here. It's the same thing as margin except on the inside of the element rather than the outside and we can add two values or four values to padding as well 
can also go ahead and give our element a border and border is always going to take three values it's going to take the size of the border so i'm just going to say four pixels the type of the border solid is usually the most common one and then we'll just we'll just make it black for this one so if we save and refresh we'll notice we also have a border around here and just a side note for colors we can also do hex codes so we could say zero 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 that's the color for black so that would give us the same result we could also say rgb zero comma zero comma zero and this will give us again the same result we can add a border radius to our element so maybe we'll say 10 pixels and that will give us um, this rounded corner on each of the sides we can also add a box shadow and this is going to take multiple values as well so maybe we'll say 5 pixels 10 pixels and so that will give us the offset on the sides as well as the bottom and then we'll need a color too and for colors we can also do rgba which will give us the same as rgb like above and we can also add an extra value for opacity so we can make this a little bit more transparent and if we save and refresh we'll see we get a nice shadow here it doesn't look ideal and that's because most um, most sites opt to using a blur shadow as well so if we add another value here the first one will be the left the side offset the second one will be the bottom offset and this will be uh, what's called a blur radius so if we save and refresh we'll notice it looks uh, quite a bit nicer some other values we can do we can set the width if we want to be specific about it maybe we'll say this is 400 pixels we could set the height to 100 pixels and give that a save and reload and we'll see now we have a very specific size rather than just filling up the full page another thing we could do to center our element is if we update our margin maybe we'll say 20 pixels on the top and bottom and auto on the left and right and this will just fill the rest of the space on this side and this side because this is our left and right margin. So these are some of the styles. There's plenty more, but this is a kind of a good introduction on, on kind of what we can do to our elements. And since we're targeting divs, maybe we'll add another div and we can say hello here. And if we save and refresh, we'll notice that this div also has the same styles applied. And that's because we are selecting all divs, everything with the div, the tag name of div. And say if we want to get more specific, we can add an attribute to one of these elements. We can give it a class and we can call it whatever we want here. I'm just going to say maybe div styles. And in order to select by the class instead of the tag name, we can add a dot in front of it. So if we said dot div styles this just says grab a class name of div styles and if we save and refresh we'll notice that this style was only applied to our second div and not our first div and another thing we could select by is we could say id and id is going to be similar to a class except it's usually useful for unique elements so it's not a good practice to have an id for multiple elements that have the same styles but maybe we call this my div and if you want to target it by I, uh, an id we're going to use a pound sign or a hashtag we'll say my div if we go ahead and give that a save we'll notice the styles are applied on this first element but not the second one and so this is another concept in css something which is known as specificity if you target uh, an element by its tag name or div in this case it's going to be less specific than if you target it by its class name and that will be less specific than if you targeted it by its id and the reason that's useful is because say we have competing styles say we want to style one l we want to apply multiple um, styles to a specific element and we only want one of them to apply, we can use IDs or classes instead of tag names to make sure that those rules are overriding the other rules. And another practice that we can use in um, CSS, which is quite useful, uh, say we had a paragraph here, just say some text inside, 
And let's go ahead and wrap this word paragraph in a span tag. So one thing we could do to select is we could select paragraphs that have spans in them and select that span. And so this space here is basically saying, look for a paragraph on the page that has a span inside of it. So between the two tags and then apply some styles inside that. So we could say, just add a font weight bold. If we save and refresh, we'll see that that word, because it's a span inside a paragraph gets selected. And we can also do this with, um, we could replace these with class names or IDs. The space just says, this is the parent element and it has a child element with this selector. So this is a way to select with multiple selectors and it can be quite useful. Say you have a section of the page and you, you just want to write out some basic styles and you know the element is in a paragraph. So we can apply that like, like so. Another thing we can do to get more specific, we could say um, span uh, dot my span. Well, let's, let's give it a hashtag actually. We'll say my span. And what this will do is it will only apply these styles to a paragraph that has a span inside that has the ID of my span. And so when we don't have a space between these two selectors, it's just going to say, grab the tag name only if it has my span as its um, ID. So if we save and refresh, we'll notice that this style was unselected and that's because this span doesn't have the ID of my span. But if we save it and refresh, we'll see the style gets reapplied. And so there's plenty of ways to get more specific in CSS and that's kind of the name of the game. If you can get more specific with your styles, you'll know that they're overriding other styles, especially if you know how you want something to be styled. Another thing we can do is we can grab multiple. We can use multiple selectors at once. Say we want two different um, selectors to have the same styles. So we could say something like div comma P. And what this will do is it will say, grab all of the divs and all of the paragraphs and apply some style. We could say color blue. And if we save and refresh, we'll notice that both the div and the paragraph get the color blue. And you'll also notice that this first div doesn't get the color blue. And, and the reason for that is because it's being selected by an ID here. So this color gets applied to this div and this gold color overwrites it because it's more specific. And that's the, the basic concept of CSS. We want to select our HTML elements, apply some styles, and we want to make sure that the right styles apply. And so kind of understanding that is the, is the first step to getting, in, getting good at CSS. And the more you write, the more practice you'll get. And I guess I'll just leave you with one more thing here that's kind of fun. Not so much um, a beginner CSS concept, but we can also add animations to our elements. So if we add this at keyframes, then uh, we can make what's called a keyframe. And that is just kind of an animation that we can apply. And it's gonna take at least two frames inside it. And so at 0%, that's gonna be the start. At 100%, that will be the end. So maybe we'll start out with a transform property and have it rotate from zero degrees and we'll have it end up at transform rotate 360 degrees. And this is just kind of how you declare what you want the animation to do. And now to actually apply it, we can make another class name, call it spin element and we can use the animation property. And this will take the name of the keyframe that we used, as well as how long we want it to take. Maybe we'll just say three seconds. And now if we apply this um, to our first div, if we add a class here of spin element, if we save and refresh, we'll see we get a nice animation at the start. And there's plenty of other things you can animate. You can animate the um, location on the page, you can animate the opacity, 
you can animate the colors. So this is just kind of um, a nice little introduction to what other things you can do with CSS. And that's been pretty much a, um, uh, an introduction. I, I hope you got something out of this. CSS is can be a lot of fun, but it also takes a lot of practice. So don't hesitate to just get get going, get building things, and uh, and get started. And thanks for watching the video. I've got more videos like this on my channel at CodeBoost or my website at CodeBoost.com. And thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.